If you've never heard about throwing off the hump before, you might think it's a very strange phrase. Definitely, it's one of the weirder pottery terms. But if you've never tried this technique before, I really encourage you to try it out um, because it's really not that hard to learn. So the whole point of throwing off the hump is that when you want to make a series of identical pieces very quickly. It's not suitable for all pottery, that's for sure. Um, definitely it's better for the pieces that have a narrow bottom. And then you're definitely going to have to trim a foot on your pieces that you throw off the hump, just because you're not going to end up with a clean bottom like you do if you throw on bats or directly on the wheel head. So the great thing about throwing off the hump is that it saves you a lot of time. We're just going to wedge up one piece and we're going to get a lot of pots out of it. So I'm going to use a quarter to a third of this uh, 10 kilo block. So I guess it's like two to three kilos, something like this. Something like this is something that I can wedge easily. You can definitely use more clay. In fact, should I? Actually, I'll do a little bit more. I'll do like a third, so three kilos, say. Right, 3.6 kilo to be exact. <laughs> so I would say, do like the max that you can wedge up, basically. So with this technique, I pretty much would recommend you use the spiral wedging technique if you can, just because it will make a shape that is more conducive to later on attaching to the wheel. But if you can't do that, that's fine. You can just slap it into the right shape. Right, so this is what I mean by the shape. So it's sort of like a cone like wider on the bottom and more narrow on the top. This is the best shape to attach to your wheel. But if you're gonna use any other type of wedging, that's also fine. Just make sure that you have this nice rounded bottom. Like it needs to be slightly round so that when you throw it down on the wheel, you're not going to catch any air bubbles underneath. Likewise, you don't want any big cracks in the bottom either. But this is just standard throwing stuff. So, we are going to throw this down on the wheel. So for throwing off the hump, um, if you're curious which tools I'm gonna to be using, of course, gonna be using my little sponge. Um, this guy I'll probably use, this wooden knife. In case I need to trim off anything, I just got a needle tool. Hopefully I don't have to trim anything, we'll see. Got my little yellow mud tools rib. And then this guy I'll show you, but he's the guy I like to use for removing the pot from the hump. Um, but you'll see that in a second. So yeah, we're just going to attach the ball of clay, just like usual. Of course, this time you gotta really throw it down. So before we introduce any water to the clay, I'm going to do what I like to call pre-centering um, or slap centering. Um, and that's when you turn the wheel slowly and you just use the palms of your hands to slap the pot. And once again, we're going for this cone shape. And when I'm teaching beginners, this is actually what I tell them to do for every pot. Um, so you've probably done this before. You don't need me to explain too much what slap centering is, um, but we are going for this kind of cone shape. Um, the second benefit of doing this is this is going to really help secure your lug of clay to the wheel because this is a big piece of clay. We don't want it flying off. The goal of this is not to center it perfectly though. Okay, so we're going to throw our first pot. 
So I'm going to be throwing my cloud cups and this is a shape that I've thrown a hundred times before, but I've never thrown them off the hump. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of view this first throw as like, not a practice throw because I'm gonna keep the pot, but I'm gonna really watch what I do during each of these steps of the throw so I can replicate them. Um, so you'll see in a second what I mean. So I'm gonna add my water. Now I'm just going to focus on this top part. This is the part that I'm going to center. I don't need to worry about the rest of this. This can stay off center, like it doesn't matter. Um, I'm just gonna focus on one cup at a time. So I'm going to focus on here. And if you've never coned before, this is a good time to learn because I definitely recommend coning while you're gonna throw off the hump. I don't know why, it's just easier somehow. So what I mean by really paying attention to this first cup is that I've just isolated a certain amount of clay. And because I've made this cup before, I know more or less, I think this should be like 400 grams approximately, right? Um, but what I'm focusing on is how many fingers tall it is. Do you see how it's, I have two muddy fingers and two clean-ish fingers, right? That's because I'm just grabbing, I'm like centering the clay just up to my second finger. And I always have my hands locked in like this when I'm centering. So they're sort of tucked into each other. So each cup should be more or less the same width. So as long as the clay I'm using is the same height, each pot should be more or less the same grams, which means each pot should be more or less the same height and width. We're going for identical pots here. If you're not worried about that, you can skip all of this. Um, but typically when people are throwing off the hump, they're trying to make identical pots. So I'm really going to pay attention to these types of things with this first pot and then make sure I do the same for the following pots. So once I'm sure that this top part is in center, I'm going to add my hole. So adding the hole when you're working off the hump is the same exact thing, except you need to make sure you're not too shallow or too deep. And this is also why I like to engage both hands while I'm throwing because I've done this a thousand times before and I know when I'm kind of getting close to the bottom, just based on this hand's relationship to this hand. Hope that makes sense. Another thing that you can do to make sure you're going the same depth is you see how far deep your um, finger is into the pot. So I'm not really doing it this way, but if I were to, it's basically like I'm up to my first knuckle deep in my hole. And I'm gonna open it up just like normal, stabilizing with my left hand. So if you've taken my wheel course, you know that we always pull towards our non-dominant hand. So I'm right-handed, I'm opening up with my right hand, so I'm pulling always towards my left hand to open my pot. It's especially important when you're throwing off the hump to do that. It's always important, you should always be doing that. Um, like, typically what people accidentally do is they pull towards themselves. I think it's just like a natural movement. You should be pulling towards your hand. This is especially important for when you throw off the hump. Yeah, and then you're just gonna go ahead and throw the rest of your pot as usual. The only special part will be how to remove it. So yeah, if you're interested in uh, learning how to throw, if you're not quite at this point yet, and in fact, you're still learning how to throw, um, I do have an online class, a pre-recorded online class um, available in my web shop. This class is something that I'm super proud of. Um, I filmed it last year during uh, Corona. <laughs> it's the product of 
teaching for so many years like I did in Berlin and I taught hundreds of students this exact same class so I have a lot of experience with knowing like what the common mistakes are and how you can go about fixing them and yeah I basically took this class that I taught all these different people and recorded it and made it online for a really good price <laughs> so if you're interested in that I'll have a link down below um, but yeah throwing off the hump is definitely for people who are beyond that so if you just happen to be watching this and you actually don't know how to throw yet um, go ahead and check out that class first that's enough plug I think <laughs> So even though I like these pots to be wobbly and wonky and look very imperfect, I always want the rims to be perfect. So I always take a moment to make sure my rim is nice and round, just because then it looks intentional instead of a mistake. Okay, so I'm going to use this for removing the pot. Now you can use a string, you can use a wire, you can use a credit card. Um, I like to use this. <laughs> this is, I think it's for making bowls. It's just a mud tools rib. I just like the way it holds, like I hold it in my hand and then I cut with this. So congratulations, you've made your first off the hump pot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to grab the same amount of clay and start again. So if you are trying to make all your pieces the same size, I definitely recommend you use a ruler. So you can measure it at various stages, but what I usually do is at the end. <laughs> um, so this is 10 and a half wide and nine centimeters tall. So what I can do is I'll measure each pot as it comes up and then I can always trim it if it's too tall using the needle tool or I'll just try and squeeze out another centimeter or whatever of clay that I need from the walls. Yeah, basically whatever I need to do to uh, keep them all the same size, if that's the goal. If it's not, you don't need the ruler. There's other things that you can use besides a ruler. Um, obviously a throwing gauge won't work for this, for throwing off the hump, but you can, for example, measure like if it's as wide as your rib and as tall as, I don't know, your tool up to this point. You can use the tools around you to measure it. There's also this thing called a tombow stick, which I do not have. Um, I believe it's a Japanese kind of pottery tool. Basically it's like a cross that you stick in and where the sticks are crossed is the height and the width of the horizontal stick is the width that your pot is supposed to be. Maybe I'll find a picture and insert it so you can kind of see a bit better. Um, yeah, Tombow stick. Google it if you don't know what I'm talking about. So one thing that I did not mention, but you'll probably notice uh, me doing here is I'm using these pieces of paper while I remove the pot. And this is not something that's specific to, ooh, this is not something that's specific to throwing off the hump at all. Um, I just do this when I have when I throw quite thin or the clay doesn't have a lot of grog in it or any time that the clay needs a bit of extra support when removing it could warp the pot basically. Um, if you see your rim start to move or collapse inward, um, this is a super handy idea because it's gonna stick to your pot just because the water will stick and it will help support the shape of your pot as you remove it.
so I finished, um, it's 25 total that I managed to throw. Um, I used up a whole bag, so I used up um, 10 kilo to make this. Um, I had two failures <laughs> that I squished. And yeah, I did it in three sections. So each of these boards is like one hump. Um, and so the 10 kilo was divided into three and that's how I threw them. Yeah, so um, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, so tomorrow I'll probably flip these and trim them. And um, I'm thinking I might actually add some handles to some of them just as an experiment to see how these cups look with handles. Um, otherwise, I'll bisque them, throw a glaze on them, and they'll be finished. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to see these finished, I'll definitely post those over on Instagram at Pottery to the People so you can find me there. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.